Hey, it's Rob here with Sportology, and today we're at the U.S. National Whitewater Center, and we're talking about shoulder injuries. And the reason I want to talk about shoulders is that, well, it's something that affects me as an athlete quite a lot. I do a lot of rolls, do a lot of moves that put a lot of stress on my shoulder. So we're here to talk to the expert, Dr. Hiseki. Made it. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. You look more like a kayaker out here. <laughs> and I only say that because I had already met up with Dr. Paisecki in his office where he examined my shoulder and gave me a quick overview of the shoulder joint. The shoulder is the joint in the body that has the most range of motion. It has the least constraint. So if you look at your hip, your hip's like a true ball and socket joint. The shoulder's like a golf ball sitting on a tee. The way it keeps the ball on the tee is it has a lot of muscles that go all the way around and they pull from different angles on that ball. It's muscle balance that has the biggest impact on pain. Because if the muscles aren't balanced the right way, the golf ball will tilt a little bit from side to side and can cause discomfort and soreness. And if muscle balance in the shoulder is key, then I wanted to know all the muscles that affect that joint, so I had him show me on Jonas. You've got a really well-developed deltoid muscle, which is this guy right here. It forms like a V that comes down like this. That's the deltoid. The pec is this guy right here. Everybody knows about the pec from doing bench press stuff. This is your trapezius muscle up here. You got a, a rock and biceps right here, and your triceps is this guy right back here. And then you can see all these other muscles in here. They're not as well defined. It's kind of hard to point them out, except to say that the lat, the latissimus, runs up here. So do like you're doing a pull up on a, on a there you go. This is your latissimus right here, coming up like this. That's your latissimus. And then all the muscles that rotate the shoulder out and that connect the shoulder blades are these guys right in here. They're, they're the rhomboids and the levators. And they connect the shoulder blade here to the spine in the back. And then the rotator cuff muscles are underneath this. And obviously those are hard to see except via a model like this. How much of shoulder injuries are rotator cuff injuries? I would say probably about 70 or 80% of the patients I see have some type of complaint in the shoulder that stems from the rotator cuff in some way. So if the rotator cuff is responsible for a majority of shoulder problems, then it made me, as a kayaker who uses my shoulder a lot, want to do everything I can to strengthen that area and stay injury free. Kind of like my friend and two-time Olympian here, Casey Eichfeld, who apparently has never had a rotator cuff problem. And that's exactly why I invited Dr. Paisecki to the center. I wanted him to walk me through the basics of the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff basically is this thing right here that sits on the, on the top of the shoulder. And it's a collection of tendons. There's, there's the subscapularis in the front, the supraspinatus on the top, and then the infraspinatus and the teres in the back. And those four tendons, as they coalesce on top of the shoulder, create something that looks a little bit like a shirt cuff. So that's, I guess, supposed to look a little bit like a shirt cuff with your hand coming out here. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's why we call it the rotator cuff, but it's really a collection of four different tendons. They blend together in a way which makes them almost one unit on the top of the shoulder, but it's actually four tendons together. Why is it that tendons seem to be the thing that get irritated? You, know, you don't really hear about muscles tearing in your rotator cuff. Yeah, well, the reason is that, that, the, way that the, the way that muscles actually affect a change on a joint is they have to pull, and they have to, in order to pull on the bone, they have to connect to the bone in some way. And the way that muscles do that is they, as they get closer to the bone, they thicken into this tissue, which is the tendon. And the reason that you'll get a lot of irritation, tendonitis, bursitis, or even a tear of the tendon, is that all the force really just gets concentrated where that tendon attaches into the bone. And so it tends to be where most of the action is when you get an injury. So of course I had to ask, how do you prevent a rotator cuff injury? So the, the best type of exercise, really the best way to be to prevent injury, most of the injuries we see is to stay active. And the best types of activities for the shoulder in general are exercises that maintain that muscle balance, which is important. And most of the time, the, the areas of the shoulder that are the weakest are the rotator cuff and the shoulder blade muscles. And so one of the best ways to keep those, those muscles in shape is to do some type of upper body aerobic exercise. So kayaking is a great exercise for the upper body. Some exercises you could do on your own are just rotation against resistance. So if you take a, an elastic band and tie it to something and rotate your arm out against resistance and then come the other way against resistance, that type of an exercise that's making you res rotate the shoulder against resistance will, will strengthen those muscles. So here's what you need to remember. 
A lot of shoulder pain is linked to an imbalance in the muscles. And the shoulder blade muscles that lead to the tendons we collectively call the rotator cuff can be strengthened considerably actually doing aerobic sports like, well, kayaking. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe. We got new sport videos coming out all the time. Also, the continuation of this video is right here, Tendon Basics. Make sure to check that one out, and we'll see you in the next video next month. Come on, Rob, come on. Nice. That was, Killed it. That was such a good run. Considering I hit the wall in the first one and missed three gates. But you know. You don't have to tell anybody that. <laughs>